Hi, my name is Bud Kraus. I'm your friendly web design instructor from Joy of Code. And I'm going to show you how to validate an HTML file or a web page, web document, or a file that has a .html extension. This is very important and something you want to do as you learn about best practices and web design standards. So let me start with a file that I already have. And it's right here. Now, uh, if you're taking one of my online classes, this might look familiar. Maybe it doesn't, but it doesn't matter. And I'm going to show you a couple of things about what validation is and what it does and what it isn't and what it doesn't do. So the first thing I'm going to note is that this page looks like it's put together with tables. And that's something that you really want to refrain from these days. You want to use CSS to do layout. But that's okay for our purposes. We don't really care about that. What we want to look at is the source code. Here it is. We want to make sure that it's correct. That's more important right now than anything. That's all about uh, getting it right. And one of the reasons why you want to get it right is so that CSS will work as it's designed to work. That is cascading style sheets, the language that's responsible for bringing style, presentation, color, layout, topography to any web page. But anyway, let's get started with the HTML validation. Now, this is not really an HTML file, if you want to be truthful about it. It's an XHTML file, and I know that by looking at the doc type statement over here. Um, so let's just take a look at how to validate this. So Now, I already have open the W3C uh, markup validation service. There are a number of different kinds of validators or HTML validators on the internet, but I always use this one because I feel that since these are the people who are developing the HTML technology, we should go to them as the source to find out whether or not our code is good or not. And one thing you might want to look at here is that there are three different ways to validate your code. One is by uh, URL. So you could just, in that case, just paste in any web address and check to see if it validates. Okay. Another way, and we'll get back to the middle way in a second, is to just copy and paste all of your HTML code right into here and validate it. That can be a useful um, technique, but I find the most useful one is if I'm working on a file and it's on my desktop, the best way to do it is just by file upload. So I'm going to browse to where this file is located, and it's on my desktop, and it's called bad.html, because it really is bad HTML. And I'm going to, oops, before I do that, I'm going to go over to more options. And two things I want to note right away is one's called character encoding, and the other is the, um, the document type. Okay, And notice I have both of these set by default, or that is uh, automatic detect. And that means that the validator will automatically look at the character encoding that I'm using in my file and the particular doc type statement that I'm using. Now, I'm just going to open up this one here and you'll notice, well, you have all these different flavors of HTML and XHTML. And you even have, at this point, HTML5, which is not yet a W3C recommendation, so it's experimental. But I don't have to worry about any of these because, as I pointed out a minute ago, I'm using XHTML1 transitional which was in my doc type statement. So when it automatically detects, that's exactly what it will be doing. The validator will read that line of my code and understand that it's XHTML. OK. The other thing I want to do is show source. Now, you're free, to, of course, to experiment with any of these. But you'll see why in one second I click off show source. So let's check the page and the server uh, looks at all the lines of code in my HTML file, line by line, okay, and it checks to see what I may have done wrong. And even though it says you did 14 errors, you committed 14 sins here, uh, in actuality, no, I didn't, and you'll see why and how in a second. And now because I clicked off Show Source, this is going to be great because when I click on this over here, it says I can't, I'm not allowed to use a P tag where I put it, and it, this is right over here, the code that I'm using in my file. So it's great. So I have all the code. Now I'm going to scroll up, which is what I always do when I do a validation. And just to see, because it's chances are 
it says I couldn't put a P tag here because there probably wasn't a closing tag above it. And sure enough, when I look at this over here, which is a table, you notice the last tag here is a closed TR tag. Well, in HTML or XHTML, for every open tag, there has to be a closed tag. And because it starts off with an open table tag, I have to have a closed table tag. And I totally missed that. So what I'm going to do is add that closing table tag right here. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to hit Command S to save the file. That's very important. So I need to do that because when I revalidate, I want to make sure that the changes I made in my code will register with the validator or that is be recognized by the validator. So again, I'm going to have to load the file, go to bad.html. It doesn't say getting better.html, but it should be. Um, and I'm going to hit revalidate. And now you see, oh, good, I'm down to 12 here. So I'm not 14, but now down to 12. So I start again with the next series. And I say, well, what do we do here? And it says, look at line 43. And like I said, I'd like to scroll up just above it. And you'll see, oh, you can't have a P tag here because you have to have a closed P tag above it, like I'm highlighting over here. So I'm going to go to that section of code. Now, one of the things about uh, text editor, which I'm using here, is you notice it doesn't have code lines, like a lot of applications that do web development, such as Dreamweaver or BB Edit or. Uh, Notepad++ and a whole bunch of others that will give you the code line. Well, text edit and Notepad don't do it. Wish they would. Uh, I'll put that in my suggestion box to Bill Gates, although he doesn't write software anymore, and Steve Jobs, and he doesn't write software anymore, telling him what I want next time in their applications. So I just added the P tag where it was missing. And I'm going to hit Control S again. And again, I'm going to go back and revalidate, but I have to load up my file. Oops, get the one I want to do here. And um, I'm going to hit the revalidate. And now I'm down to four errors. Now, you notice I don't look at the file. Okay, I can look at the file, and I can refresh the file. And it's starting to look like what it was supposed to look like. But HTML is not about looks, not about appearance, about presentation, about how something looks. So I'm really not focused on how the web page looks. I'm really focused on the HTML code, which is more about giving meaning to content. That is, that's the purpose of HTML, is to organize the content in a meaningful way. It's a lot like grammar. So it's not really important that I'm looking at the file every time I'm correcting my errors. Okay, well, what's the next thing I have to look at? Well, I go down over here, and I see what? I see it looks like I missed a closing li tag over here, huh? Yep, I certainly did. So I will go to the code, and let's put in that missing list item, or the closing list item tag, li, right there. How about that? And now I'm going to, once again, save the file, Control-S, or Command-S, and back to the top. Let's try it again. Okay. Let's revalidate. Well, we're getting there. Two errors, okay? Let's do, let's see. We'll scroll down here. Looks like I didn't close the file correctly. So I'm going to go right to, now I could check right over here if I want. And sure enough, well, the file just can't end in a closed table like that. It has to end in a closed body and a closed HTML file, or a closed HTML tag, because all web pages end in those two tags without exception. You're always going to end your file with closed body and then close HTML. And that's it. So now I'm going to save this and go back to the top and validate. And
and let's revalidate one more time. Yes, we get the green bar of happiness. It says that we passed validation. Now it's possible you may get an error when you do this. Not, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not an error, but a warning. And I would just ignore the warnings for the most part. It's not terribly important. But when you get that green bar of happiness, that means you have a file that has passed W3C validation. So we're all set. Now, once again, I can go back here and take one last look, but I don't think you're going to see any changes because the changes were to the code. And that's the most important when you're dealing with HTML validation. So I hope that you understand what the purpose of validation is, which is to make sure that the tags are in their right sequence and their right order. But what it doesn't do, it doesn't tell you that you're using the tags correctly. So it's totally possible to have a file which validates but uses bad code. For example, uh, a page that would have nothing but H1 tags, or a page that had nothing but paragraph tags, or a page that had lists but didn't use list markup, or a page that uses tables for layout. S those pages can all validate but it doesn't tell you, the validation process does not tell you whether or not you use the tags correctly. For that, that qualitative assessment of your page, that's something that only a human being can do right now. For the quantitative assessment of your page, that is, did you get all the tags in the right sequence? For every open tag, is there a matching close tag? That's the purpose of HTML validation, which I've just demonstrated.